Uh, I'm going to begin by asking John, I mean, this film is, of course, li about leaving home and mm. kind of starting, uh, sort of, again, moving out into the big, bad world. I was just wondering if that's a theme you can sort of resonate with. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I moved to London when I was 27 and um, uh, to direct plays very happily rather than having to move because there was no work at home necessarily. But I was struck, and it was very confusing, I was struck by um, a very similar thing that happens in the novel, which is you move to a new country and it's certainly not home for you. Um, and, but when you go back home, your home isn't there anymore either. You know, you've left home and your relationship to that country has, has changed and its relationship to you is different. And this sort of um, hovering between two spaces is captured so vividly by Colm in the novel and then we really fought to have that contained in the film as well. Nick got it in the screenplay as well. And to have an immigration narrative told through the eyes of a woman is so rare as well. Was that part of the appeal for you? Totally. That's what also made it feel very fresh and not like a period piece, was that, that um, you have a very, very specific young woman's view on uh, this journey, which um, it sort of ke it kept surprising you as you read it, that it, it um, felt completely free of cliché. Was it? I mean, we as, as an audience member, I completely fell in love with New York, and I and, and I, I was really rooting for Ellis to get with with Tony. That was I was really kind of pro that. Was it then a challenge to try and make Ireland as attractive a, an option again? Very much so. Yeah, because it's, it's in, you know the film is sort of in three parts or three movements. You know, in the first part, you sort of have to keep a very tight rein on anything colourful because you're trying to express her world, which is quite circumscribed and tight and um, not colourful. And then of course the American section it gradually develops as she gets a little bit happier into into something and it's not quite the pop culture 50s that we know of it's 1952 so it's still kind of post-war but when she comes back home it's one of the markers that that you want a viewer to realize at that point how far she's come because you see her through the eyes of people that knew her when she was back home in Ireland and it's sort of it's like one of the Kennedys coming home or something. She's suddenly quite glamorous and she's got sunglasses and, and she's like a, a sort of film star. And um, so, so yeah, very much. I, was, I mean, there's a very kind of subtle humour to this. I think mean, Julie mm. Walters in particular has sort of got the majority of laughs. Was it quite tough to bring in that kind of sense of comedy into a film that's otherwise quite moving and quite kind of profound? It wasn't tough. It just felt like it was there to be mined from the script all the time. So... When we were meeting actors, it was very, very important that you would, you would be able to have actors who could do the emotional stuff without ever losing some of the wit because they're, they're very closely allied in this instance. And it's not, you know, here's a funny bit, now here's a sad bit. It's the two go right side by side in, in, uh, in a lot of Irish um, work, actually. I mean, it's the, the two are often very close. Laughter and tears. Well, like Father Ted, like we were talking about before. Not many tears yeah. in that, but more laughter. But <laughs> There's yes. just something quite sad about it, though. There's this kind of knack to be quite poignant, even more sort of surrealist, quite overstated moments. In which? Like, in Father Ted. I think it's a, but it's a kind of... It's a <laughs> emblematic of kind of uh, Irish comedy, though, or kind of Irish production. Though. Maybe, maybe. I'm just... I usually find it too funny. I don't know that I get sad when I'm watching it. I'm probably sad to be watching it still, but anyway. <laughs> and I mean, there, there must be something so wonderful about creating a, a kind of 50s aesthetic, because it's a kind mm. of romanticised or glorious era, particularly mm. through the kind of, through the lens and through cinema. Mm. Uh, the costumes, the cars, it must have been pretty cool to be on a set that, with everyone kind of dressed up. It was great. Apart. It was great. But, you know, we had to keep a tight rein on it because you don't want it ever to feel like a movie movie, you know, and it, it's, you're trying to create a world which people feel they know very well and of course they know that it very well through the movies so we had to sort of gently calibrate that and do all our homework and get it all looking right and then kind of be very light with it almost throw it away and just have it in the background as it were i mean so it's a remarkable turn from saoirse do you think that she could be in for an academy award nomination do you think she deserves one she certainly deserves one so who knows yeah. but i mean because there's, there's it's so subtle and there's so many moments that I felt like it, it wouldn't be anything that was necessarily written on the page, but mm. just what she brought to the character. I mean, was, ever, was that something that you were able to appreciate on set? Were you able to stand there and think, this is quite special? Is that, does that all sort of come in the, in the editing suite afterwards? Um, it's a bit of both. You know, there's no question that when you're watching stuff on set, uh, um, uh, you can tell that it's um, exceptional. But it would be later on in the quiet peacefulness of an editing suite when you go back through six or seven takes and... Um, you're looking to calibrate something very particular for one moment in the film and you see the variation that she's given you which is really subtle and uh, really authoritative. That, that's when you really um, spot the full range of her talent, I think. I'm just funny because I read that Rooney Mara was initially attached to mm. the lead role. I mean, I can't really picture that. I mean, how did 
but at what sort of stages did she leave and how did Sasha come, come on? That was a conversation before I was involved in it. So there was another director and another actor. And then um, uh, I came along and as soon as it was a sort of blank slate, as it were, I went straight to Saoirse. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today. All right. Much appreciated. <laughs> thank you. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys, Is yeah. that from The Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.